the people's platform good evening and welcome to the show it is often said that bribery and corruption is deeply entrenched in the Sri Lankan societal fabric. Uh, now, post Aragalia, post declaring bankruptcy, uh, there was a demand for more conscionable governance. There were the IMF proposed reforms, civil society backed reforms. One of the key aspects of which was the implementation of the Anti-Corruption Act. Our topic tonight is charting the anti-corruption landscape. I'm pleased to welcome to the studio Pumi Madhushani. She functions as program manager political sector transparency international Sri Lanka good evening and welcome to the show Piyumi. good evening Sonali. Piyumi, when we talk about implementing um, this anti-corruption act in Sri Lanka we have to directly tie it to the Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption the bribery Commission has been given a significant amount of power under this new act which is great how must they ensure that they utilize this power to ensure that issues of grand corruption are brought before it? Uh, yes, so I would like to start uh, with the 2022 People's Movement mm -hmm. uh, because uh, their people have been demanding for uh, corruption reforms. When uh, People's Movement occurred, it was because uh, Sri Lanka had hit the biggest economic crisis in the history. For the first time in the history, Sri Lanka had defaulted its uh, debt and uh, people were suffering and they were unable to fulfill their basic needs. I think there was a clear understanding among people that uh, corruption was one of the main root causes for this issue and there were clear demands uh, from, uh, from the citizens uh, to address the issue of corruption through various means such as asset recovery, clean politics as well as good governance and also to have uh, more transparent and accountable governance. Mm -hmm. So uh, to recover from this what experts civil society as well as uh, international donor organizations such as uh, IMF have been recommending governance reforms. And if you have a look at the IMF tracker, uh, the Ga Sri Lankan government has uh, made progress up to around 46 percent. But the question, the real question is whether there is enough political will to sustain these changes and under these reforms implementation of the new anti-corruption act comes so we now have a new anti-corruption law which uh, repeal and replaces the previous bribery act the commission's act as well as the law on asset declarations so with the new anti-corruption act uh, the bribery commission gets more powers and functions to address the issue of corruption but the question is uh, whether this will be limited to paper or whether this will be implemented successfully hmm. uh, how must um, the bribery commission ensure that it adequately utilizes this enhanced power that it has now got under the new anti-corruption act um, according to international standards as well as international conventions such as uh, uncac united nations convention against uh, uh, corruption states uh, are required to have a body to prevent and fight uh, against corruption through law enforcement and this body needs to be independent uh, uh, without undue influence and also need to have enough capacity and training to uh, fight against corruption. I think this at this moment the new appointment to the commission uh, is critical for two reasons. One, this will be the very first commission appointed under the new law and there is a huge demand from the public to address the issue of corruption. So the strategy, uh, the anti-corruption strategy of the bribery commission can include deterrence, prevention as well as education. But 
having prevention and educational initiatives would not be sufficient when there are bigger uh, corruption scandals going on in the country. So they need to uh, respond to those as well. In order to gain public trust, the Bribery Commission needs to act fast and also respond to uh, uh, grand corruption issues going on in the country and in that way it, it's part of accountability and in that way they can gain public trust and partner with public to uh, report and complain on corruption as well. As you alluded, uh, Justice Neil Iddavala is uh, leading the three-member um, commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption. Uh, recently appointed commission, um, lots of um, expectations by the public. How must the bribery commission now gain public trust? Because the public are a key stakeholder in the anti-corruption framework. Of course. And if you... Uh look at the current context, there are uh, greater corruption issues. There are allegations around health sector procurement, mm -hmm. around uh, sports. And in the recent past, uh, Sri Lankans, some of the Sri Lankans' name were mentioned in the Pandora Papers. Mm -hmm. So there were these scandals and what, what are we doing about it? And if you look at the new Anti-Corruption Act, it gives a lot of powers to the uh, bribery commission and now it has the mandate to uh, conduct preliminary inquiries, investigations and to prosecute against corruption and also to act as the central authority to uh, control the electronic system established for asset declarations and also they can collaborate internationally to prevent uh, corruption. And this also expand the scope of work because new offences such as uh, private sector bribery, sports sector bribery, as well as foreign bri bribery and so on are included within the scope of uh, bribery and corruption offences. Uh, I would also uh, like to highlight the fact that uh, corruption happens secretly and it requires adequate powers for the commission to act fast. And if you look at the some of the powers given to the commission under the new Anti-Corruption Act, it has the power to arrest without a warrant. It can use uh, expertise, knowledge, expertise, uh, assistance to carry out investigation and they can do joint investigations with other investigation agencies. Uh, like that, uh, it has been given a lot of powers and now it's about how well they will use these powers and uh, function. Um, Piyumi, I'd like to um, get your perspectives on the deep politicization of processes that um, that often gets uh, reported in, in international reports. Um, the IMF um, has spoken about this as well in its um, diagnostic governance report, how everything is so politicized and how there is political interference, political manipulation. So how, how do you how do government agencies act independently when when there is um, thuggery and manipulation and um, uh, fear-mongering tactics that are used by politicians? Uh, I think that is one of the main challenges an independent commission would face in this context uh, in the country. Uh, it also relates to having an enabling environment because it is a responsibility of the government as well uh, to give the commission enough space to act independently, especially when it comes to prosecution against uh, high-profile cases uh, and grand corruption. And also they need to be facilitated with the, the financial resources as well as human resources to address complex and uh, uh, complex issues because uh, corruptions, especially grand corruption, they can uh, have very complex uh, uh, 
transactions and they can involve multiple jurisdictions and the legal processes could be very lengthy. So in order to overcome all these challenges, the Commission need to have enough independence and it is part of the responsibility of the uh, government to give that space and also there needs to be political will for that. If a grammar saver in some remote part of Sri Lanka takes a bribe of 10,000 rupees to do some task, uh, which he's officially supposed to do, um, it, it, it isn't that arrest that should be making the headlines. Why is there no focus on uh, arresting or bringing before the law those who are guilty of grand corruption? Uh, so if you look at the, the CABOC website, Bribery Commission's website, you will see a lot of examples, like you said, uh, uh, the public officials getting bribes and then they being convicted. What we do not see is uh, a prosecution against corruption, which is, it seems to be happening uh, not very often. So that is what we are also expecting from the the bribery commission under the new leadership uh, other than their prevention mechanism other than their educational programs they need to show deterrence as well through prosecuting high profile cases and and that needs to happen very fast actually Mm, this conversation surrounding bribery and corruption, we wouldn't be having so frequently, Pyumi, if not for our own complicity in um, letting bribery and corruption and it, that culture being normalized. Why are we normalizing giving someone 500 rupees, 1,000 rupees? It's because processes don't work. So how do we, um, how do we contribute to this anti-corruption discourse? That's a very important uh, question because we need to understand that uh, for the bigger problem of corruption in the country, there's no one solution. By having this anti-corruption law would not itself solve the problem of corruption and citizens also have a role to play in this. I would also relate this to the whistleblower mechanism because Sri Lanka lacks a whistleblower mechanism. People would not come forward uh, to report and complain about corruption if they uh, have to risk their occupation or their life. So if we have a good whistleblower mechanism, if that ensures they have safety when it comes to reporting corruption, then uh, we are creating a safe environment for citizens as well to uh, report corruption. And it's citizens' role again to not normalize corruption and bribery and to proactively report and complain corruption to relevant authorities. All right, fantastic. We're going for a short commercial break. We'll be right back. People's Platform. Nava Vasarak, Nava Naikatwaya, Nava Chayakrahi Kamanak. Sri Lanka, Zimbabwe, Iktina Saha T20 Cricket Tarakavalia. Janavari Hayavanita Sita, Daha Atavanita Dakwa. Pitiya Watakota Negina Chayagosa, Sachi Viva Vindina. TV One Nali Kava Samada Randin. TV One TV for Life. Supreme Court declares presidential pardon for Duminda Silva.
as unlawful. Vegetable prices soar. Agriculture minister urges people to take up gardening. Government nurses go on strike. Tear gas and water cannons against the IUSF protest. Iran strikes militant bases in Pakistan in the latest Middle East flashpoint. TV One, TV for life. So these are the three industries that, uh, very interestingly, the industries that brings in dollars to this country, right? the tea, the garment and the migrant workers. There was a time when the plantation child was seen as a child who was groomed to be a, a domestic worker. But then things have really changed. When one domestic worker uh, migrates, I think uh, an employer pays to uh, almost 800,000 to 1 million rupees for one domestic worker. Not only participation, of, you know, becoming politician, but also exercising your voting rights as a citizen of the country. Creating public awareness is one of the important things that should happen. And then uh, the workers need to be organized and then um, uh, facilities given for them to sort of organize themselves and demand for their rights. Face the Nation, Wednesday nights at 9.30 on TV1. If the people of this country still opt to vote for the Rajapaksas and the SLPP, then we have very, very little hope. Sri Lanka has a unique uh, position of being the absolute last in uh, the world in terms of uh, revenue to GDP. You need to get rid of corruption, mm. then only we can think about at least you know, some uh, rationale in the development of a country. As a party, uh, we are planning to organize uh, a lot of uh, protest campaign and uh, some uh, meetings mm. and uh, you know demonstrations, mm. all kind of thing from January. When the purchasing power, what we call the aggregate demand, goes down, it will have a negative impact in the economy as well. Face to Face, News First political talk show, Monday to Friday at 8 p.m. on TV One. platform. Welcome back. Charting uh, the anti-corruption landscape in Sri Lanka is our topic of discussion tonight. Pyumi Madhushani joins me. She's the program manager for TISL, Transparency International Sri Lanka. Um, Pyumi, we're discussing uh, the role of the Bribery Commission in implementing the Anti-Corruption Act, but also talking about uh, the larger questions surrounding uh, having uh, being um, in a culture of bribery and corruption in Sri Lanka. Um, let's talk about the importance of um, the bribery corrupt uh, the bribery commission gaining public trust and in this respect over the um, in the recent past we've heard of instances as reported um, by media of um, several high profile cases concerning politicians being withdrawn by the commission um, this has caused some kind of um, concern among pub the public. Speak to us about this aspect. Yes, so if you look at the past records in 2021, out of the 69 cases filed by the Bribery Commission, 42 of them have been withdrawn. And uh, in 2022, out of uh, 71 cases that Bribery Commission had filed, uh, 43 had been withdrawn and the reason reported uh, was mainly due to technical errors because there was a case in 2019, Anoma Pulvatta case, where it, uh, in this judgment it mentions uh, uh, for, uh, for the bribery commission to file a case in court all three signatures need to be there. All three signatures of the commissioners need to be there. And due to this reason, uh, they had to withdraw many of the cases. 
and unofficially we have heard most of them have been refiled but the point here is uh, public is not aware of this uh, uh, issue so uh, the bribery commission need to uh, communicate their measures their actions as well as uh, progress more proactively and it again connects to the gaining of public trust and the accountability that they need to have right um now for the bribery commission to do its job properly it needs to have adequate resources how important is it for the state to ensure that the these resources are adequately allocated um, the human resources um, the financial allocations um, the technical support all of these things of course so i would give you the best example uh, in terms of asset declarations for the longest time in sri lanka asset declarations have been a secret document people did not really have open access to asset declarations of politicians or public officials and with the new anti corruption law uh, people can have access to a redacted version of the anti corruption uh, of the asset declarations through an electronic system established by the government and uh, bribery commission will be the central authority for this so this is a big system because uh, the number of public officials and politicians that need that need to submit as asset declarations have been expanded so uh, they will be getting asset declarations from all over the country and uh, by that time uh, the system need to be in place which is a complex one which requires a lot of uh, financial obligations as well so that is one of the means as a declarations is one of the means that people can get to know whether their uh, representatives are uh, illicitly uh, enriching so having access to asset declarations especially before elections if they are coming is really important and this system need to be placed in place soon so likewise financial uh, needs are there as well as human resources needs are there and those need to be addressed by the government as well my final question to you piyumi is um perhaps if a person watching this thinks to themselves why should i care about whether the bribery commission is doing their job what's it to me how am i impacted what what's the response you have for them bribery commission has the the sole mandate to uh, fight against corruption and prevent corruption through law enforcement and you know uh, people lack trust on law enforcement they lack uh, trust in the justice system could be due to de delays so there is a real need uh, for the bribery commission to uh, uh, address these concerns and as citizens we also have a role to play in the implementation process especially to uh, uh, not be silent when corruption is happening and uh, to report corruption to this kind of authorities and also to follow up and uh, monitor on the evaluate or monitor on the uh, implementation of the anti corruption law because pressure uh, always needs to be there from the citizens end as well and it has a good impact on the implementation process overall all right fantastic piyumi madushani program manager tisl thank you for joining us thank you for having me today thank you for watching us we'll see you again tomorrow good night